let me ask you about melanoma because I know a few people who have found spots on them and they go get them cut off or filed off or whatever. But to quote your Twitter, you say, for those who think sunscreen helps protect from melanoma, you are the people who keep dermatologists in big houses and luxury cars. You are fueling their centralized empires. Sunscreen blocks how all molecular clocks operate as flow meters for entropy. Wake the fuck up. A lack of UV is associated with melanoma in Americans and Europeans. Imagine that. Melanin can transform 99.9% .9 of absorbed sunlight into heat, and this greatly reduces the risk of skin cancer. The heat builds the coherent domains in cell water, and this also enhances the amount of infrared radiation, red light, you can receive from the sun. A lack of sunlight is the real danger of skin cancers. The centralized belief is the sun is toxic. The decentralized truth is just the opposite. So how about you hard stop here? Because you gave a lot of word salad by reading that. You got a lot of newbies. This is the best way for you to explain what I just said. The centralized paradigm belief is the sun is toxic. If this is true, then everybody who has melanoma should have a vitamin D level through the roof. What does the dermatology literature actually say about that condition? They're deficient. It's exactly the opposite. In other words, people that got melanoma have very low vitamin D. So what is the return of serve that Jack just gave to everybody out there? The dermatologist now will come out and say, oh, well, it's the serious sunburns you get. Guess what? You go read their literature, it turns out sunburns are not associated with melanoma either. So every time they open their mouth, they stick their foot in it. The tweet that you just read is actually the biophysics behind why people have a problem. And it turns out what we know is that in the cell cycle, mitosis happens with an extreme ultra weak UV photon release. Hard stop for a minute. We found that out in 1923. A guy named Alexander Gerwich did an onion root experiment. I um, talked about that with Ruben and Uberman on the podcast, and it was clear that Uberman had never, ever read that paper. And I said to him, if mitogenic radiation, meaning mitosis, you can't get past mitosis, requires UV light, what's the first question you should ask yourself? Where the hell does the UV light come from? And realize that this onion root experiment was first done. The onion wasn't connected to the vine. It was actually inside a house. It was cut. And the onion was emitting ultra-weak UV light. How was that proven? We didn't have photomultipliers in 1923, but Gerwich knew from a lot of the physics experiments that were being done around the photoelectric effect at the turn of the century, that if you put quartz in between the two onion skins, that the UV light would go through it. If you put glass between them, it blocks it. And he showed definitively that he knew it had to be UV light because glass completely blocked the effect. And he still got mitosis in the other half of the onion root when he used quartz. So when you see that, not only the first question that I ask you, where's the UV light come from? Then here's the big question you got to ask yourself based on the opinion that you're trying to make here in this podcast. The dermatologist, Bill Gates, and the ophthalmologist all have something in common. They want to block sunlight. Yet, you just learned that onion roots and just about every single cell anywhere that's alive uses ultra weak biophotons to stimulate mitosis. So tell me how the sun is toxic since the sun is the source of UV light on this planet. That's where it all comes from. And that means also that living things have to have a mechanism in it either to copy and save that light so it can be used or the other possibility is there's a mechanism in living tissue to make UV light. That really blows your fucking mind because if it turns out that cells are able to make UV light, then you go back to Bill Gates, the dermatologists and ophthalmologists and go, if we make it, how could this be toxic? And it turns out the answer is we do make it. We do store it. We do both. And it turns out the dose makes the toxin. And the key thing is when you know that every living cell emits these biophotons, these biophotons come out in extremely, extremely low intensity. 
you have to have these special machines to do it. But these special machines were built in the 60s and 70s, and physicists actually took living tissue from all domains of life, and every single thing on this planet emits ultra-weak UV biophotons. So it's no longer Jack Cruz is the crazy motherfucker on the internet that says this. This is now published in textbooks of biophysics. Everybody in the biophysics world knows that what I just said is axiomatically true. Here's the interesting thing. Nobody who's a dermatologist does. Bill Gates certainly doesn't, and neither does the ophthalmologist. And guess what? Your listeners can go right now and buy Roland Van Wick's book called Light Sculpting Life that covers the 120 years of research done on biophotons. And when you find out just how much is in that book, guess what you're going to realize? That tweet that you just read of why Jack believes that the story is exactly the opposite. When you live in blue light and you subtract red and UV, that's the fastest way to get to skin cancer. I mean, that all makes sense. So if you knew someone who had found a couple of melanoma spots, even someone who doesn't really use sunscreen, like my father doesn't really use sunscreen, but this is happening. Some people are trying to say it's seed oils, but what would be your first steps to tell a person, hey, let's correct this problem. Here's what you do. Well, I mean, everybody's N equals one is different. And you have to realize there's a lot of roads that lead to Rome, meaning there's a lot of roads that lead to skin cancer by different metrics. But ultimately, what it comes down to is that your skin is atrophic. It doesn't have enough melanin in it. It also doesn't have enough infrared A light. The seed oils are actually not a story about food. It's a story about deuterium. For those listeners who want to learn about that, a uh, podcast was just done with an Australian doctor who has interviewed me. His name is Max Gulhain. When he started out before he interviewed me, he was one of those food gurus, like the guys I already mentioned. And the reason I stopped at three podcasts with him, I'm like, dude, I'm done talking to you if you're going to continue to think this is about food. So the last, I'd say, year, he's jumped down this thing and he started to talk to a lot of biophysicists. But the last guy he just talked about or talked to on his podcast was Gabor Somali, who's the expert in deuterium. Turns out anything that's a seed or a seed oil comes from a C3, C4, or CAM plant. And it turns out those plants have higher levels of deuterium in them. Guess what determines that? Photosynthesis does. Again, we're back to the light story. It's not a food story. So when you realize if you have too much deuterium, say in the wrong place in your body, that that sets you up for a possible oncogenic potential, the answer is yes, that's true. But what's happening in humans is we're fucking each of these steps up. Not only are we not going in the sun, our use of technology has brought us inside in front of blue light screens that have no red and have no UV. So the sun that we worship now is an artificial one that's loaded with blue. Blue light stimulates the growth of melanocytes. And then when you eat seed oils that's in your food, that slows the spin rate of the TCA cycle down. Plus, you're not going in the sun to begin with. And your skin is atrophic. You don't have enough melanin in it. So you can't absorb the UV light. Then on top of it, then you go and put sunscreen on that blocks tyrosinase. And then you make your skin even more susceptible to electromagnetic radiation while the whole time the dermatologists are telling you you're protecting yourself. No, you're actually protecting their bank accounts because all of those activities guarantee that you're going to come back into their office for wallet biopsies. And here's the kicker. Max did another podcast with a dermatologist named Richard Weller. There was a paper that came out two years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. The dermatologist that wrote it was Adamson. I just talked about this on Twitter literally this week. This will shock you even further. The reason why the tissue diagnosis of melanoma is going up, because that's what all the dermatologists want to tell you, that it's higher, turns out because they're overcalling it. And this paper was published two years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I was very glad to see that Weller talked to Max about this, because here's a dermatologist who is admitting that his profession is filled with a bunch of scammers. Now, he did it in a much nicer way than I just said it, but I'm telling you, you need to know this. So 
when you go in in Florida to your dermatologist and they tell you, oh, I got a couple of these Nevi, and they tell you that looks bad, they're going to look at this and say, oh, well, this is an atypical nevus. It could be a superficial spreading melanoma. We're just going to cut it out. Realize when they give you that diagnosis, if it's not true, then you continue to believe the drama, the paradigm they're selling you. And the problem is I know no patients go in and read the paper that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine two years ago. Don't get me wrong. I, I get it. But patients are paying these people to be experts. And the medical care that you're going to get is only good is who's packing your parachute. It's very similar to what I just said to you about Google's AI. If you look at Google's AI that's based on wokeism, you know, you get pictures of Putin that look like an African king. Because guess what? The mistakes or the biases in AI are magnified in the outcome. That's exactly what Weller was trying to explain to Max when he talked to him. He said, look, if you go to a dermatologist who really believes the sun is bad, they're going to blame everything in creation. They're going to overread everything because that also drives their Mercedes payments, drives their business forward. But the key point to stop this madness is what I told you when I went on this rant to begin with. Ask yourself as a person listening to this podcast, why is it if the dermatologist and Gates and ophthalmologist are right that the sun is toxic, why does every single skin cancer out there is associated with a low vitamin D level when we know vitamin D is only made from UV light between 312 and 320, which is UVB light? Explain. And all you're going to hear is fucking crickets. Why? Because that's what decentralized science does. See, when you ask the right questions, you uncover really the scam of centralized systems. And what I'm trying to do is make people realize you have to get away from the institutions that are supported by these centralized systems, which in large part is big pharma. You know, I, I made a, a comment that I'm surprised you haven't picked up on Twitter yet that have you ever noticed when you go into a pharmacy and guys go in there, rob it of their Oxycontin? Do you ever notice that the sunscreen is always right in front of the pharmacy and it's never locked up? They want you to steal that because guess what? If you use it, you'll be back for more drugs later down the road. Yeah. Because every time you block yourself from the sun, either by sunglasses, contacts, glasses, clothes, I don't give a shit what it is. You are making yourself more susceptible to the sausage maker that is centralized medicine.